Hey there, everybody. This is take four for some reason. This is Nikki Jordan with Got Space, and I'm on day four and five of demanding more of myself. And today I put demanding more of ourselves because I'm including you in this in case this resonates with you. So this time that keeps going on and on, um, and maybe in your country or your section of this country, it doesn't feel like this, but where I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, life is sort of stopped a little bit. Yes, there's school and yes, some people have work, probably many people have work, um, but there's a blankness to it. There's a blankness to where what used to fill our lives, as we know, is no longer there. And there's this uncertainty as to when this will end. And human beings don't really do well with uncertainty, right? They like the safety net of being able to go off and explore new things and then come back to something. But when the ground that you had defined as the the foundation of your life or what was in it that you chose to, to, to have in it or you just uh, were born into or whatever. When that starts to shift or fade or disappear, it doesn't feel really good because human beings don't know what to do with that. They don't know how to create something new. And you can equate this to a divorce, for example. Someone who got suddenly divorced out of the blue didn't know, you know that their relationship was on the rocks or whatever. They weren't really aware. And then they suddenly have this blank space. And I'm reminded of this blank space that I used to fear when I was younger um, with my grandmother. My grandmother was very influential in my life. She was not just influential in my, my life because she was my grandmother, but she was a dynamic person. And plus she spent a lot of time with me. We were very, very close and she supported who I became and who I became before anyone else in my family even really knew that. And so I always looked up to her because there was something about her that didn't seem to ever mind being alone, being, and, and she spent 18, my grandmother spent, died at 102 and spent 18 years without my grandfather and had a whole different kind of life afterwards. And, but this was a person who created her life. She was always creating her life. And I asked when he died after a while, I said, aren't you lonely? And she said, no, you have to understand I'm never lonely. I always have a book. Um, she lived in the woods of Maine a lot of the time. And I would say, well, she, she said at first when he died, you know, it was, it was an empty night. You know, my nights that suddenly got very quiet. But then I started to love this. And she started, you could tell that she felt more and more connected to everything around her. Her house, her things, the nature, the beautiful sunsets, whatever it was, she was connected to all of these things. And... Um, in this time of like a stop energy and where suddenly our connections with people and what they are doing or what they are struggling with or whatever, they're not, necess not necessarily everybody's talking with each other and the places where they would have gone to, to have communications have sort of disappeared or faded away or people just lose motivation to go there anymore. When this happens, there's an emptiness. And what is it that comes in? And I say this because when you, when you realize that literally every, if everything, everybody were taken out of your life, what would you choose? If everybody and everything disappeared from your way of life, they weren't there anymore, what would you choose? And this time kind of feels like that on an extended basis because, um, we're not as social as we were. Now, you know, certainly I see some people on, on uh, Facebook and all who are social, but we're really not as social as we were before for most of us. And um, so it reminds me of my grandmother who seemed to be totally comfortable with herself. She was totally comfortable with the space of herself and wasn't alone. And sometimes we didn't talk for weeks and weeks. And then and then it was as though no time had passed. And I'm reminded of this time because a couple years ago, I found myself in the position of needing to leave my husband half a world away and take my daughter home. And that meant a very long standing, which some of you know, because you've congratulated us on being 33 years together, um, know that 
that's pretty big. When you leave something that has always been the foundation or the fabric of your life or always there, when you leave it, what fills that space? And at first, when we have nothing in our life, we can struggle and it can feel really depressing. And um, like, can I do this? And you question your, your ability. And it wasn't just that I came back to not having him. I came back to a life that didn't really bring me in it and maybe never even had me in it before. And so that's really something that I had to look at. It's like, am I so different from everything around me that there aren't things as actual friends? And I said, this is going to be really good for me because the person who I always relied on to be an anchor for me, to be my rock so I could go off and do everything I want, wasn't there anymore. You know, and that happens to a lot of people for when they lose their parents. It's like the thing that was their rock in life, even if it wasn't a great rock, <laughs> was there. Some people feel free from that and they're happy, but a lot of people, it's very disorienting because you're supposed to now be the rock for something else. You know, we look up to our elders, even if in this culture in the United States, we're not that respectful of them, but there is something about that. So when I lost my rock, <laughs> I was like, you know, the greatest relationship that you ever have is the one with yourself. What am I missing? What am I not being for myself? And how can I be for myself that I've never be been before? And I'm looking at this because, you know, I'm also finding in this situation now, I'm seeing some people who are very social, having trouble with this. Oh, hi, Janine. Um, and, okay, I can't read it all, but living alone didn't bother her before March, and now, and I can't read the rest of it um, online at the moment because I'm just on my little phone. But yeah, until now, things didn't really bother you, and then there's this blankness, and it's so, it's almost depressing. It's like a hole you fall into. And I'm watching... Um, people I know who are very social and um, children who are not having their friends the way they were or friends are gathering without them. Where do you go? Where do you go? And it takes us to the ability to really think about what we truly care about, what we really want that maybe we didn't even notice. And maybe Maybe because life isn't even the same, we're able to ask that question because we had filled everything in. And I'm going to bring up something that sounds a little bit weird um, to some people, but you know, people talk about finding the love in your heart all the time. We have to be heart-centered. We're heart-centered. This is what connects us. I actually don't believe that because, first of all, you know, on a chakra level, you got seven of them. And you can connect all kinds of ways. But we have focused so much on the love in your heart. And yet people's experience of the world is often full of a lot of pain. So we are asking people to sense something that not only comes from pain from this world, but in my profession, because I'm a psychic and a channeler, and I see where people have not only felt pain before, but created amount, amount of pain that is huge and it comes back to them either because they believe in karma or someone cursed them or whatever. And this is what we can get rid of. We can get rid of this very easily. But it, 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 these are not the only ways that we connect. And so the idea of ascending into a new dimension of love or whatever actually I think needs to be quite largely expanded. What we need to do, or I shouldn't use the word need because not everybody needs to do that, right? <laughs> what is really available to us is to understand what connection truly is. And the very first place that is, is what are you avoiding about who you are that filled in all that space? And can you demand of yourself to know you now and see you as a friend. So I train people how to connect in a physical and energetic way to their infinite being and also to connect to the infinite. Those are two different things. 
right? And those experiences of connection leave you without grasping here. Because when we grasp externally for what we really want, we forget the connection to ourselves. And if we keep asking us to ourselves to find the love of each other, when we haven't even found the connection to ourselves and the infinite, and we don't know how that we can connect through truth, we can connect through thoughts, we can connect through energy, we can connect through actions, it isn't just our heart, then we're missing something that is truly available to us that may give us more possibilities of not feeling blank. And yet even that blankness that we can feel right now, because there is no certain future, we can't even in many countries, we can't even predict what this is like. So we're stuck with just now. Well, isn't that interesting? There isn't the past is irrelevant. You could dwell on the past and you could put all your emotions in the past and you can and you can focus on it, but then you're living in the past. What we can do is be really hyper aware of what is right now. What is? And what doesn't resonate with us, right? And so I know that this isn't true for everybody, but what I live in a very multicultural place. I walk outside every day through people of all races and oftentimes oftentimes mostly not really but it does not resonate with me that we don't treat each other as human beings that we have different categories of what's acceptable and so i am never that vibration yes i get mad yes i get depressed yes i i i can feel angry i just um but these are fleeting things because my main focus in life is how to be all space because in the space is the connection and that connection might feel kind of blank to some people because they th might think that there's more in that connection than is just all space when you become the vibration of connection and you're there for a while there is no separation you are it so it feels like there's less oomph there's less motivation there's less things that grate on you and that might not be something that you're used to we might just be used to feeling the roller coaster the um the friction the i got an enemy or the judgment that you make not just others and we might be used to that we may not at all be used to the vibration of connection and yet here we are in this blank canvas time wondering what we're going to create and if this world is going to survive together, right? Because we cannot survive if we're not surviving together because then we create antagonism and little wars or big ones, you know? And so, um, you know, when we make ourselves superior, when we think we're different, when I, I'll even say if People think that there's, you know, one species called humanoid and one species called human and there's something different. You know, we, we're, that's already a lack of connection. We're, how can we sit in the vibration of absolutely sameness and feel that and not be worried at the space and emptiness that gives us? And in there, really wonder who we are. This post didn't really go where I thought it was going to go, as usual. Um, but I had to sit there for two years and find who did I think I was, that I was just reacting to the world around me and the situation I was, and what do I really care about? And all I found is that all I cared about was right now. And sometimes I wasn't creating as much as I thought I should create, but in those two years, it was a very difficult time for my daughter. And I got to be there 100% in that space of the pain and difficulty. What can I do right now to create more space? And the more I sat in the space and the connection 
to everything, the more the answers just came through. People ask me, how are you a channel? How do you know that stuff? I said, this, everybody can be this. If you are in the connection, you will get the answers. They will just come flying through. Or the information, if people don't like the word answers, whatever you want to call it, the words come. They come because you're connected to everything. And the only way we get there is by stopping filling what we think is the world around us. And in fact, all that is, is us responding to all the separate things around us. We filled in our lives as us. Someone told me, you're way too far ahead of where most people are. And I feel like, I don't think so. I think if we just, if we just commonly ask the same questions, if we commonly wonder, wow, have we all been thinking that we're individuals fighting for our life, our rights, what we want, you know, um, who am I that I didn't know? Um, what's the other, like, sometimes I think of about, you know, God, people love the word fuck you. I'm just so sick of that word because that is a war in itself. It's a little war, but it's a war of trying to find out who you are, but by pushing everything else away. And in fact, this emptiness is one of the greatest gifts we could get if we, if we use it right. If we use it <laughs> to be connected, imagine the world that we could find. And the only place is I watch people struggling. I watch children with no friends. They can see their friends hanging out with each other and not them. And I'm like, what resilience and what strength and what connection to you and what you truly care about will you find that will carry you far forward in the future with the security of you? That's a weird word. Security is something that's safe, right? But it's not really the security, it's the connection, the, you know, that care emoji that we see now in Facebook, that care, yeah. That thing cares about you, right? And that's the difference. When you, when you are connecting to yourself as a human being, you're connecting to infinite you. And infinite you is connected to everything. So today's demanding more of myself is to be okay with the blankness and not find what needs to be fixed. Find what is actually there. And I hark back to my father saying, which I have many times said this here, that he said, you know, the problem with today is everyone's too busy all the time. And look at us, we fill our blankness with looking at our phones, trying to find something in our phones or whatever that's not there. Maybe you're the person that goes out in nature and, and, and looks at the connection to nature, yay. But for many people, it's it's looking at devices. It's, it's I mean, it's trying to find connection or, or putting something inside because inside and the emptiness is too uncomfortable. But what if in that, he said, you know, in the blankness, in the quiet is where all the information comes in. And that's the word of someone who invented something that changed our lives, which is, of course, the Russians invented it first, but it's the satellite. Our world revolves around this now. And when someone told me, you know, who I look up to very much, my dad, that the problem is there's no quiet anymore. So we don't have the information. I know this to be true because when I channel, I go out in space and it's quiet and everything comes because that's where I'm connected to everything and so are you. We just don't know it. So I hope my musings are not, or my information or whatever, are not so far away from you that you can't grasp it. Um, and if there's something more that you want from this, let me know. I, I do these 10 week things and I usually create a group with it. I haven't even done it yet because I think it's still showing me what it is. And I definitely want to have some classes because I thrive on channeling classes because they want to come in. The class wants to come in and we get to be together looking at what's possible, what can change, who we are, 
What more is there that we cannot see here? So, okay. I really thought this was going to be much lighter. I thought it was going to be about cleaning up this room I'm in, but maybe I'll do that today. Maybe that's the thing demanding more of myself is what is this space that I call my office that is me, that I'm not seeing because all I'm seeing is little objects in the way. What am I supposed to do with that? What am I supposed to do with that? I like space. I like clean space, but I make so much mess. It's terrible. I have stairwells full of stuff. What do all those things want to contribute to me today? Wherever they want to go, whether if they want to be recycled, if they want to be given away, if they want to be put away, what can that create? Because I'm connected to all of it. All right, have a nice day.